Good morning Year 6. This is our second writing lesson of the week and we are going to be focusing on our objective to identify the features of a balanced argument. So we will be looking once again at the shape of the text and thinking about what features we know we need to include in order to build that shape together later on for our writing throughout the rest of this unit of work. So think back to yesterday. Can you remember that key that we looked at? It was all of these shapes we need to include when we're writing. Now these shapes, every different text will have a different shape to it. So these little symbols show us things we must include to build the shape of a balanced argument. So I just want you to see a little challenge to yourself. Um, can you write a checklist of the shapes we need for a balanced argument? Give yourself a minute, write down as many as you can remember, and then on the next slide we'll go through and see how many that you've got. Well done. So, how many did you remember? Now, if you remember them all, that's fantastic. Count up how many you've got and see if you did remember them and I will go through them again. So, we've got our key question, the question we're seeking to answer. The heading, because that gives us a bit more detail. An introduction, so important in a balanced argument because it sets out the two opposing arguments you're going to discuss. You've got your senior view, that top view there. You've got the community view, how do other people react to it? Then you've got the pupil view because it will impact the pupils. You've then got a conclusion. Now that brings together all of the arguments and allows you to come up with a final conclusion. And then you've got your agree statements and your disagree statements because they support the argument that you're making. Well done if you manage to remember those, all of those. Just a reminder of the role of each. So we've got a key question that needs to be answered, a heading that gives us more information, an introduction to put forward opposing views, senior view, those higher up views, those community views, those that are being affected, pupil views, and you've got conclusion, which brings everything together, agree and disagree statements. So thinking about those, we need to put them all in, okay, they're all important in their own right, but without each of them, we cannot build the perfect shape of a balanced argument. Yesterday, you read this balanced argument, the find the shape one, and what I've had done today is I've typed this up, cut it up into different parts, and you now need to put it back together and carefully think about which sentence goes where and how they're grouped together. And using the shape from yesterday, you should be able to think about how the sentences have been stacked and put together to create a cohesive piece of writing. So your first job is to reshuffle these sentences that have become all confused and find the original shape of this piece of writing. Great work. So by now, you should have been trying your best to put the shape of this piece of writing back together. So did you manage it? And it's really important to be able to restructure this piece of writing because it actually allows you to see how the structure of a text allows you to get your point across clearly and succinctly. So we need to be really clear on how a balanced argument should look and how it should be written in order for us to produce a fantastic piece of work by the end of this unit. So now we have really found and understood the shape, we need to understand the mechanics of how that shape is created. So what we're going to look at is the useful phrases and their purpose. OK, so these useful phrases are used for the flow, the cohesion of the piece of writing. So let's have a little look at the first paragraph together. Our playtime is essential to children's well-being. So we've got our key question there. OK, so since the academization of schools, pupils entitlement to playtime is an issue that has polarised opinion. So some really good language in there. So since the academization of schools, I've highlighted that as a useful phrase for cohesion because that tells you when this issue began. So that opening sentence there actually tells you when it began because it says the word since. It also has a really nice phrase in there, polarised opinion, which shows you two opinions on opposite sides. They're at polar opposites, like a magnet two completely different sides. So, carry on reading. Many stakeholders believe it should be a ring fence time and protected at all costs, while others believe more time for lessons is required. Two fantastic useful phrases in there. Many stakeholders believe. That means lots, lots of people have an opinion on this. So it says here, many stakeholders believe, and that's one side. Then on the other, it says, whilst others believe. So we can see there are two different lots of opinions here, but a really useful sentence structure type. Carry on reading. The subject has ignited furious viewpoints, divided communities and caused conflict among professionals, social workers, child development officers and paediatricians included. And there again, it's listing the people who have been affected by this issue. And I've highlighted the phrase furious viewpoints because people feel quite strongly about this and I want my reader to know that really carefully. And it is causing quite severe arguments. 
And then as I carry on, I've picked out one phrase here, which says, it is vital that a 360 degree view is taken. So that's telling the reader, and it's a really useful phrase, that tell, tells the reader we need to look at all the viewpoints and we can't just look at one. So these phrases are going to be useful for your writing. So what I want you to do is you're going to do a task very similar to this on the next slide. Just as I had in the paragraph before, I want you to do a table of useful phrases for cohesion for paragraph two and three. And you're going to pull out useful phrases and why you think they're useful for structuring a balanced argument. So for example, in stark contrast, using the phrase in stark contrast is a really good adverbial to give an opposite opinion. So again, here I could pull out in stark contrast, write it down as one of my useful phrases, and I would explain why it is useful for this text because it's giving another opinion. So you're going to spend your time now going through this paragraph two and paragraph three and pulling out useful phrases and writing down their use and their purpose for your own writing. Fantastic work today, year six. Please upload your completed table to be marked. And I want you to make sure that you've identified quite a few phrases because these will be useful for your own writing this week. So be picking them out and thinking, how could you magpie them? How could you steal them to use in your writing?